I'm one of those people that believes that criticism is actually a good thing. Sometimes it's the swift kick in the ass you need to make the necessary adjustments in your life for the better. Maybe that's exactly what Lincoln Riley needs right now because criticism is more than warranted in Pasadena, California. If you are new here, welcome into the channel. My name is Cole Thompson. I'm a radio show host based in Houston, and I talk college football daily. So this is the type of content you enjoy, especially with the coaching carousel heating up, college football playoff around the corner. We got conference championships in two weeks. Make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment telling me your thoughts on Lincoln Riley's really lackluster 2023 season. Tell your friends, your family, your sister, your brother, your mortal enemies, your best of bros, and the drunk guy passed out in a public parking lot about this channel. And as always, let's continue to talk college football. By the way, mustache right here. I do it every single year for November. November brings awareness to men's suicide, testicular cancer, and prostate cancer. If you would like to be a part of the solution or just find out more information, please go visit Movember.com or you can click the link in my bio down below. Lincoln Riley and USC got boat raced on Saturday against UCLA. Against a UCLA team that's prepared to fire its head coach and Chip Kelly because of they aren't meeting expectations. And it was a bloodbath. There is no other way to put it. We can phrase it however you want, but it was a bloodbath. USC marched in. They're going to finish the season 7-5. and five, And they made no necessary offensive adjustments. They allowed UCLA to completely unravel this offense. And they look like the better team. USC had three rushing yards. UCLA had 199. USC had 384 passing yards and one touchdown. Ethan Garbers had three touchdowns, no interceptions, only in 155 yards. USC had fewer first downs. They were worse on third down. They were worse on fourth down. They actually nearly were outgained by a UCLA team that ranks in the bottom half of Pac-12 total offenses. Oh, and even though they averaged more yards per play, it wasn't by much. And so the question turns to now, why is Lincoln Riley facing criticism? Well, plain and simple, because of you failed to make the necessary adjustments in the first half of the season that were going to dismantle you in the second half of the season. And now people are coming out and they're criticizing him and they're calling him out on his BS. And they're more than happy to say, hmm, is the right guy on the hot seat? Are they wrong? Are they? Because Lincoln Riley in his last 14 games is 7-7. Seven and seven. Against top 10 opponents, he's 2-7. and seven. Oh, and to add more insult to injury, he's 0-3 when going to the college football playoff. He's had more countless quarterbacks that have won Heisman trophies or been Heisman finalists than almost anybody else in the country. He's been an offensive mastermind that's turned the tides in both Oklahoma and at USC, and they still can't get over the hump. He's 40 years old, he's been a coach since 2017, and he's never made the necessary adjustments to his defense and to his philosophy that allows him to finally be put on that pedestal alongside the Kirby Smarts, alongside the Dabo Sweeney's, alongside the Nick Sabans. But because if he's such an offensive guru, we give him the benefit of the doubt. No. Philosophies sometimes have to change. Ideologies sometimes have to differ. And most of the time, criticism will allow you to see through your own masquerading crap that gives you a clear cut, this is not going to work. You struggled against teams in the Pac-12. Do you know who you play next year? Do you know who you play moving forward in the Big Ten? Defenses like Iowa. Defenses like Michigan. Defenses like Ohio State. Have you seen what they've done this year? And you're not able to hold your own at times offensively against teams like Notre Dame, against teams like Utah, against teams like UCLA. They're good defenses. They are very good defenses. They're not that. They're not that, and that's because if you don't try and trench play. It's because of your philosophy of what you have when it comes to practice. You don't go physical. You don't try to have tackle drills. You allow the same type of malarkey that occurred when you were in Norman travel out to Pasadena. And now the criticism is coming at an all-time high for a viable reason. Lincoln Riley, I don't know what happens. I don't. I know there's a lot of fans right now in Pasadena who are tired of seeing the same crap. They finally found themselves a quote-unquote generational quarterback. And the only reason I put that in layman's terms or in quotations is because of I don't believe you can have four generational quarterbacks in one generation. But Caleb Williams is special. And he's going to have to end his tenure with five losses, even in games where he played well. He's going to have to end his tenure without making the college football playoff. And he's going to have to end his time both underneath Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley at 
USC with a non-conference championship. And uh, what's the other thing? Oh, yeah, with no shot of a national championship. That's on Lincoln Riley for not making the necessary adjustments. And the thing is, this is a team that right now is playing soft. They are. I mean, you go watch them in practice. You go watch them in the way that they handle business in the open field. There's reasons for criticism. Now, here's the main thing. People are saying, well, why doesn't Lincoln Riley just go ahead and resign? Like Paul Feinbaum came out and said, Lincoln Riley should pack it up and leave USC. Not for another job, but because if he's overrated. The guy still has won 73 games in his tenure. He's also had been to three college football playoffs, and he's had five 10 win seasons before this past year. So you can say that he's justifiably a good coach, but like I always say in life, two things can be true. Lincoln Riley has never put an emphasis on defense. Go look at his numbers when he was at Oklahoma. One time in any of the major categories did Oklahoma rank inside the top 10. It was ninth in 2020 in run defense. Every other year, he never ranked inside the top 25. But he is not getting fired. Lincoln Riley disappointed in 2023 with the Heisman caliber quarterback, with elite wide receivers, with a quality running back that he added in via the transfer portal. But he's not getting fired. Lincoln Riley has the opportunity to still be one of the best offensive masterminds in college football, even if his defense is sputter and he's not getting fired. Those two things are true at the exact same time, but philosophies have to change, plain and simple. And I don't mean you can't go out there and say, we're going to add in a prime candidate at defense coordinator. No, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. In fact, here's the deal. The last thing that you want to do is be a guy who's going to be a name mentioned for the job out in USC and you walk in on the first day and you shake Lincoln Riley's hand and you go, very nice to be here, coach. I'm excited to go ahead and change the culture of this defense. And he says, go fix my defense. I'll see you in June. That's not going to work. It starts with philosophies. It starts with what Lincoln Riley wants in the transfer portal. It starts by changing up your tempo in practice. It starts by making the necessary adjustments during the off-field play so your on-field play isn't abysmal. That's what it comes down to, because the last thing that you want and the last thing that USC needs is to march its happy ass into the Big Ten next year and be belittled, berated, and embarrassed on national television. You don't think that USC is going to be one of the most prominent teams mentioned next year? They're going to be on every single Saturday, and they're going to be boathouse in front of a national audience, and everyone's going to see the flaws of the philosophy. It's not a defensive-minded thing. It's a culture thing. It's an adaptability thing. You just watched in College Station as Texas A&M paid $77 million plus dollars to change a culture. If Lincoln Riley does not change a culture, he's changing his address and his zip code because if he won't last long. And the reason behind that is not because of anything other than pure bruteness that refuses to make change. Adaptability is your most important tool as a head coach. Guess who's made changes? Kirby Smart made changes to his offense. Guess what? They're an offensive identifying team. Nick Saban, every single year, has made changes. He's gone out of his way to hire the right people, put himself in the right situation, bring in the right recruits, and lo and behold, the Crimson Tide, once again, are back in the running for a college football playoff spot. Even last year, you look at what happened with uh, Steve Sarkeesian. Like Stark went and brought in Gary Patterson, of all people, to change his defensive philosophies because he realized this is not going to work in the Big 12, and it sure as hell is not going to work in the SEC. They made adaptability changes. And Ryan Day, you know, Ryan Day is an offensive-minded coach that a lot of people have given flack to, and for good reason, because his defenses were softer than Swiss cheese on a nice hot day. That's what they were for the first start of his tenure. And then he went out and he hired Jim Knowles from Oklahoma State, and the reason why Ohio State is where it is today is not because of its offense. Its offense has been a factor, but that defense is so fundamentally sound and so pristine on Saturdays that it is basically an immovable object. And it's like every team that runs into it is told, <laughs> good luck. Change. Adaptability. It's not just about hiring the right defensive coordinator. You can hire whoever you want. And I'm going to tell you right now, people, USC is a prominent job in college football. The logo, the branding, now with the Big Ten next to it, it is a top-tier job, whether you're a coordinator or a head coach. There will be names that are going to be mentioned, countless names, 
group of five head coaches. You're going to hear power five defense coordinators all brought in and they're going to get the right guy. But if the culture doesn't change, then unfortunately, neither do the results. For Lincoln Riley, this is a big time test for him because you watch as other coaches said, I'm going to make changes to my staff. And he says, now I'm just going to score outscore you. No, you won't. No, you won't. You won't outscore people in the Big Ten. You won't outscore people when you play in the college football playoff. And you'll be right back at square one if you're even allowed back in the building in Pasadena past 2024. He's not going to be fired in this, this offseason. And I don't think he's leaving this offseason for the NFL. But let's make things abundantly clear. You adapt or die in college football. Right now, Lincoln Riley is dying if he doesn't adapt. Guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Don't hit the X button yet. Make sure you hit subscribe to keep up with all of our daily content found on Just Saying It and anything else that we post on this channel. Bye.